Okay, this video is going to be on the basis of the Kundalini, the pineal gland, and also the light particles that are called photons that lie within each cell in the body. All of these books are going to be used in order to show the breakdown of how they all relate to one another. Now, starting with this one, no more secret, no more lies. We're going to go, begin straight to the point. It may shock you to hear that the first extraterrestrial abductions occurred 100,000 years ago when the Anunnaki teams descended upon the earth and rewired your DNA, disabling 10 of the 12 strands that were part of your original makeup, your light coating. You were raped of your immense potential, stripped to the bare bones required for your survival as a race and, and as future subjects in the Anun of Anunnaki rule. Now, these Anunnaki's he's talking about is the reptilians that came from the Draco constellation, which are the Illuminati. Because you can go on YouTube and you'll see people shape shifting and shit, such as Queen Elizabeth, the Pope of Rome. They even got um, news reporters shape shifting. They also have Justin Bieber, where he's shape shifting and people caught him shape shifting at, at an airport and all types of freaky shit that we ain't used to. Okay, so these are those ones that um, basically fucked us over. So this is why you get Yaldabroth and the reptilians that do the same thing that the jealous God does in the Bible as far as like sacrificing and just bloodthirsty all over the world. They working together. Okay, anyway, once the biogenetics, once the biogenetics had completed their mission, their engineers grew the grid around the planet, an immense force field that created such dissonant waves that, in fact, we found we were unable to reach resonance with you. Now, moving on to, the, to another page. Many of you are becoming to reactivate and rebundle these mutating DNA codes aided by cosmic energies filtering into earth fields and the immensely amplified radiation of your solar deity. He's talking about the sun. He's talking about how it's going through the Aquarian constellation and those prominence are causing our cells and molecules to speed up and also take in more photonic energies, uh, light particles. With the, para, with the propaganda has you fearing, which the propaganda has you fearing, while you cover yourselves in harmful and immensely profitable chemical shields of sun tanning variety. Now, this book is from a lady, Patricia Corey, who was a channeler or is a channeler, but channeled people from Sirius. OK, so this is where this information is coming from. All right. On to the next page. The ruling, the power ruling Earth hybrid descendants of select Anunnaki, Atlantean interbreeding, want to deny you all access to the story of your true origins. For they know that such empowering realizations will shake you from your clutches, from their clutches. They want to prevent the acceleration of your transmutation into light body, whereby you resemble your original genetic wiring. For they are fully aware that you are soon to release from limitations and soar, and soar beyond your confinement. Now, y'all keep in mind about the light body. We're going to go into the light body. Heavy. Now, here it shows how they disconnected us. Okay, disconnecting 10 of 12 light-coded filaments, human DNA, achieved through the activation of the electromagnetic grid placed around planet Earth. These dissonant frequencies scattered cosmic light waves and disrupted the gossamer, gossamer web so that the family of light could no longer reach you. Okay, manipulating each, manipulating Earth frequencies to hold the planet and imbalance uh, accentuating three-dimensional polarity. Okay, now this is what we get. See, encouraging the shit off the heart chakra. 
see, division by race, sex, religion, community, stimulating hate, fear, all of this to shut the light particles off inside you. Because once you stress, this causes the photons to be shut off inside your physical body. We're going to go into that too. As well as within each DNA strand or light particles of a, because it ain't number of light within these DNA strands. Okay, we're going to find out that light stores information. And that all 12 DNA strands are actually a part of the Galactic Federation families of such from different um, races or beings in the universe. We are all connected to them. We are all akin to each other in DNA. But those have been shed from us. They're dormant, but they will be awakened very soon. Okay, moving moving on. Right here you see, you have the fifth element, the grounding seed, your Gaoan cord. You have the sixth, the higher consciousness of the family of light dormant within you awaiting the awakening of what has always been yours so it's telling you okay now moving on all of this is correspondence to one another we're moving on to this and all of this is going to tie back to all books are con everything that i'm saying is going to be connected to one another the 12 layers of the dna esoteric meaning that which is hidden of the mastery within now this here shows Within the 12 layers of the DNA, the summary, DNA layer 7, Lemurian layer 1, okay? It's, it's basically telling you how this layer, the 7th layer DNA strand, is the family of the Lemurians, okay? This is where their information or their progress as far as like being at their peak in evolution lies within us. So this is in that DNA strand. Okay. Right there. Okay, now we shall go into the source field investigations by David Wilcox. This is gonna deal with the photons that's inside your body. Now we're gonna get straight to the point on everything. Okay. It's talking about um Pope started out by examining one of the most de deadly carcinogenes known to man, technically called benzopyrene. He zapped it with an ultraviolet light and found out that it absorbed light. Okay, and then sent it back out at a totally different frequency. A very similar, very similar chemical benzopyrene did not have this light scrambling effect. And unlike its deadly cousin, it was totally harmless to living organisms. Okay, now let's pop on down here because I'm trying to get to the point on everything. These deadly cartosynergenes consistently targeted the frequency of 380 nanometers. In fact, the only common link Pope could find between these various cancer-causing chemicals was that they all took in this three, 380 nanometer light and rearranged it to some other frequency. Obviously, this implies that 380 nanometer light is very important for our overall health and well-being. But if you never allow any light to touch your skin without wearing sunscreen, you may not be getting very much of it, since sunscreen completely blocks ultraviolet light. Bouncing back to this book, this is in connection with what I just read. Now, we just read this, but we're just going back to this so y'all can, so can see what's, what's really going on. So, right here, many of you will begin to reactivate mutating DNA strands. Now, we just read about how tanning and putting all this bullshit on your body are stopping these UV rays or gamma rays from entering your body and unlocking these DNA code arms. Okay, it's here too in this, same, in this book, as well as the source field investigation book. Okay, now... Somebody either on some shit or piggybacking off each other. Okay, getting to the point. We back in the source field investigation. As Pope's research went on, he found that all living things were continuously emitting photons, ranging from only a small number to many hundreds. Interestingly, rudimentary 
animals and plants give off significantly more light, some 100 photons per square centimeter per second than the humans do. At only 10 photons per second and in the same size area, this was highly this was high frequency light ranging between 200 to 800 nanometers, well above the visible range. And again, it was coherent light, just like a laser beam. Pope also discovered that if he shined light on a living cell, they would uh, first absorb it. So I'm telling you, cells absorb light in the core of every cell is light, photon, light particles. Okay, and then release an intense burst of new light after a brief period of time. He called this delayed luminance. This is exactly what we would have expected to see after Garavi's, Garavi's discovery that the DNA molecule stores light. Obviously, the DNA is doing something with the light, not just storing it indefinitely. This is this also fits in perfectly with. Gore witches, I don't know how the fuck you say that. Um, observation of the energy emerging from the tip of an onion, including the fact that the effect could be blocked by shielding off ultraviolet light. In short, our DNA apparently stashes away light as if it were a direct source of energy and, vi and vitality. Okay. If the DNA gets too much light, it sends it back out. Perhaps like an organism might, ex might extract waste products it no longer needs. Now, what it's saying here is that it can't withstand all the photons because the body is not alkaline enough. The body is not electrically charged enough. It has not become a conductor for light. Okay? So, if one was to Go through the rainbow body stage. Wait a minute, I'm finna get there so you can understand what I'm saying. So this is like once the kundalini goes up. And if the body is not radiating enough and vibrating enough to withstand these this light, which is emitting through the electrical current, then one would burst into flames or one would have severe nerve damage. Okay? Severe nerve damage. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to bounce back to this. Okay, this is from Gobi Krishna's book called Kundalini, Path to Higher Consciousness. Now, in this part, what I'm going to go over is talks about how he raised his Kundalini the wrong way. And he he suffered um, nerve damage and all types of stuff. And he was aching all over his body. Okay, this is him, the way he couldn't take the pain no more. Okay, he was laying down. Pull, pulling the cover over my face, I scratched myself to my full length on the bed. Burning in every fiber. Um, at this moment, a fearful idea struck me. Could it be that I had aroused Kundalini through pendula, or the solar, or the solar nerve, which regulates the flow of heat in the body and is located on the right side of Shashuma? Shashuna. Now, what he's talking about is Shiva, which is the destructive energy. So what Gobi did was he raised just Shiva itself, and he didn't raise Shakti, which is the nourishing energy, which we will find out very soon. So, so if I was doomed, and also he he also mentioned that his his diet sucked. He was not healthy enough. His muscles and nerves were not strong enough to withstand it. So that has a lot to do with it as well. So I'm going back in the book now. So if I was doomed. The idea flashed across my brain that the last minute attempt to rouse Ida or the lunar nerve on the left side, okay, that would be Shakti, the activity thus neutralizing the dreadful burning effect of the devoid of the devouring fire within. That's the serpentine fire. With my mind reeling and senses deadened with pain, but with all the will power left in my, at my command, I brought my attention to bear on the left side of the seat of the Kundalini, of Kundalini, and tried to force an imaginary cold current upward through the middle of the spinal cord, and that extraordinary 
extended, agonized, and exalted state of consciousness, I distinctly felt the location of the nerve and strained hard mentally to divert its flow into the central channel. Then, as I and then as if waiting for the destined moment, a miracle happened. Okay, what miracle was that? Shakti awoke him. And Shakti cooled his body off and he, he didn't have to go through all that pain no more. The white serpent. Okay. So we'll go into a little bit of this. There was a sound like a nerve thread snapping and instantaneously a silvery streak passed zigzag through the spinal cord exactly like the sinuous movement of a white serpent in rapid flight, pouring an effulgent cascading shower of brilliant vital energy into my brain, filling my head with a blissful luster in the place of the flame that had been tormenting me for the last three hours. Completely surprised at this sudden transformation of the fiery current darting across the entire network of my nerves, only a moment therefore and enjoyed at the sensation cessation of pain cessation of pain i remain absolutely quiet and motionless for some time tasting the bliss of relief i soon fell asleep bath bath and light and for the time afterward and for the time after after weeks of agonized of anguish felt the sweet embrace of peace of restful sleep okay you see voila now, Gobi Krishna explained what it would be like to raise the Kundalini or these light photonic particles when the photons or your cells are not open enough and ready to withstand this vital light or serpentine fire or these light particles or these um, photons, basically. OK, now we're going right back to the source field investigation to continue on to see exactly what's really going on within these cells. OK. DNA apparently stashes away light as if it were a direct source of energy and vitality. If the DNA gets too much light, it sends it back out. Okay. His didn't happen that way, uh, Gobi Krishna, because his electrical current went up. But one went up, which was just Shiva. Okay. The nourishing energy didn't go up. Shakti didn't go up. Shiva is the masculine energy and Shakti is the feminine energy. Okay, perhaps like an organism might excrete waste, produce it no longer needs. However, Pope believed that unlike waste, these light emissions were serving a very useful purpose. They contain information. Specifically, these light pulses carried the codes to reestablish order and balance throughout the body. Okay. Now, I mentioned about stress, how stress shuts off the photons and the light and causes all types of illnesses to move inside, inside the body. Now, here's my, my proof as far as like what, what's been studied. Okay, this is still in the uh, source field investigation. Pope also found that we give off significantly more of these photons when we are going through stress. Even though we are not taking in additional light, I consider this a very significant point. We know that many illnesses are enhanced or even caused by stress. And it could be that when we get stressed out or go through negative emotions, we're giving away some of our own vitality by shedding the light stored in our DNA. OK, all throughout our cells. Why do our bodies end up doing this? It appears that these extra bursts of light contain the information our cells need to heal themselves. OK. Shutting it off for a minute. This means that we must not stress. Okay, find a way to not stress. Because once you stress, you shut off the light within you. As I said. Okay, moving on. Why do our bodies end up doing this? It appears that these extra bursts of light contains the information that, okay, see, body needs to heal themselves. From all the damage we've done causing them through nerve, through negative emotions. Okay. There we go. Therefore, in order to get back healthy again, we're going to have to change our DNA back up and get more light. Okay. Now, even in the Holy Quran, it makes reference. Okay. That 
You can't. They think they can shut off the light of Allah, but they cannot. Now, it's talking about these photonic particles. Now, we're moving on. Okay. All right. One individual who was particularly agitated and had a very incoherent brainwave pattern produced an abnormal shift in a UV or ultraviolet light that the DNA was absorbing. The change occurred. The change occurred at a wavelength of 310 nanometers, which is close to Pope's magic value of 380 nanometers. The same frequency can can cause cancer when it is scrambled. This angry person also caused the DNA to coil up tighter in its winding. Both of these are very useful effects. According to Ren, this change in 310 nanometers of light could only mean that an alteration in the physical chemical structure of one or more of the bases in the DNA molecule has occurred. That means that our thoughts can actually create physical and chemical changes in the structure of the DNA molecule, as well as winding and unwinding it. Now, Lob saying Remember in his book, the cave of the ancients, he had to view the aura of an old man, but ass naked. This is the best way to see the aura, according to the llamas. And he noticed that the guy had cancer, and Lao Tsang told him to not stress. He said because if he stopped stressing and had a peaceful mind, he would live longer. Now, this deals basically right back with what has been said right here. As far as our thoughts structure our DNA molecule depending on what type of attitude we have. This is why your attitude can lead you in life to good or bad. So your insides reflect your outside. Okay. Okay, now watch how I work. Watch me fuck. Watch me work. Okay. I'm on y'all last with this shit today. Okay. This is in connection and in Okay, um, this all this is gonna be in harmony with one another. Now watch how Count Saint Germain say the same thing in his own way about what I just read. As far as like our thoughts controlling our inner cells and all that, and the light particles being shut off and being actually illuminated. Now, my son is Count Saint Germain. The great and Count Saint Germain is the Archangel Uriel, just in case y'all didn't know. Okay. My son, the great cosmic law does not discriminate any more than does the man, the manipulation table, the multiplication table, if one makes a mistake in its application or electricity. When one who is ignorant of the law governing its use tries to direct its force without knowledge, the way to control it, the knowledge of the way to control it, the great immutable decrees which forever keeps order in the infinite realm of manifested life, are all based upon the one great principle of creation, love, that is the heart, the source of all, and the very hub upon which existence and form takes place. Love is harmony, and without it in the beginning of a form, that form cannot come into existence at all. Love is the cohesive power of the universe, and without it the universe could not be. In your scientific world, love expresses itself as the attractive force between the electrons. It is the directive intelligence which wills them into form. The power which keeps them swirling around a central core and the breath within the core that draws them to it. The same is true of each vortex and force everywhere in creation. Okay, let me pause right there for a second because I got to bounce to a book to show you exactly what Count St. Germain is talking about. He's actually talking about the chi energy that holds the like the planets from actually bumping into each other. Okay, this is like the cushion between the, the planets from actually getting off their cores. And this chi energy actually is love. It's actually is compassion that holds molecules, 
together and from clashing into each other that causes chaos. This chi energy causes order, okay, which is love. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, going into Lao Sain Rampo's book, Wisdom of the Ancients, we're going to talk about prana. Okay, prana. There are two meanings to this. The first is that is that this is a chakra connected with the cardiac plexus. This prana controls the state and health of the heart. It's connected to that branch, the heart chakra, that is, which is the, the love chakra. Okay, it is connected to that branch of nerves in the heart, which gives a shock to the heart muscles and the my heart muscle and thus causes the heart to beat with a certain rhythm. This form of prana shows in the aura as a yellow orange color, which tend to become a reddish hue and those having a very strong desire of the lower nature and of the lower animal nature, such as adhesive indulgence in sex and in food. It's talking about the lower chakras right there. The red chakra, and I know what them is. But anyway, the second prana is rather better known in the average person. It is connected with breathing. This is the one I'm talking about. And with breath control. We will not deal with it here. Okay, we ain't got it. We ain't got to. I'm finna go to something else. Now, bouncing back to Gobi Krishna's, where he talk about prana. Okay, prana. It's the vital energy. Okay. Aspects to discharge different functions in the body. It circulates in the system in two separate streams, one with favorite and other with frigid effect. Clearly perceptible to yogis in the awakened condition. From my own personal, he's talking about his own experience. I can also unhesantly affirm that there are two main types of vital currents in the body which have a cooling or heating effect. He's talking about Shiva and Shakti. Okay. Prana and Apana exist side by side. Okay. In the system, in every tissue, in every cell. Okay, see? This is that cushion between them. These two flowing through the higher nerves and their tiny ramification, ramification as two diff, distant currents. But he's still talking about Shiva and Shakti here. He just gave a mention about the prana that's in between them. Their passage is never felt in the normal state of consciousness. The nerve being accustomed to the flow from the very commenced of life. Now, we must remember that chi and prana is the same thing, just in different languages. So, we're going to go into chi and see what it says. This is a vital, this is, this is vital force. Anything which comes within the sphere of matter. So, we have chi, the breath force, which corresponds to the lowest plane with the etheric force. And then higher with the auric force. Okay. So again, moving back to Unveiled Mysteries, where Count St. Germain is talking about the breath within the core that draws them to it. Okay, this is the chi, because wherever the mind flows, the chi energy goes. Okay, now moving on. The central core of the electrons swirling around it form an atom. This core of love is the atom where the magnetic pole is to the earth and what the spine is to the human body. Without a central core or heart center, there is only the uniform. Universal light, the electrons filling infinity and swirling around the great central sun. The electron is pure spirit or light of God. It remains forever uncontaminated. And perfect. I told y'all that these light particles are actually residue of your soul body. Okay? Because your soul is entirely too big to fit in the physical body. Your physical body would not be able to take those energies that's radiating from that light body. 
Okay, this is why when a person ascends or they transition or they trend, they, they become an ascendant master, the physical body disintegrates and all you see is a beam of light. They become a beam of light because the photons accelerate to such an extreme rate that the physical body disintegrates. Okay, and you become what you truly are, a light being. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Come straight out this book. Okay, we're going right to it. Okay. 2012 is a 20-year cycle, as you can see. It's a 20-year cycle. So here you have it. 2012, the calendar begins, or the cycle begins, but it ends in 2032. Some say 2036, but at the, at the top of the capstone, you get the all C and I. This is when all our eyes will awaken, once we enter the Aquarian age, Okay. So this is what this talking about right here. So the Masons hit it. They hit it. If y'all want to read on it with this, y'all can. So y'all can get a full scope of what's going on. But I'm about to get to some key points. So this is why I'm still going to show this just in case you know, I don't want to leave nobody out. Leave you clueless totally to it. But I'm going to cover my grounds. Okay, now we're just going to go into this rainbow body that I was just talking about. This light body that I just mentioned. Okay, the rainbow body. Could humanity be prepared to move into a light body of some kind? Um, as the mystical prophecies of the roaster, the founding fathers of America and others seem, seem to have suggest. Okay, we're going to keep it pumping. I'm getting the key points. Now, in Sufism, it is called the most sacred body and the super palestrial body. Parasolo body. Toyists call it the diamond body, and those who have attained it are called the immortals and the cloud walkers. Yogic schools and tantrics call it the divine body. And Kriyak yoga and Kriya yoga, it is called the body of bliss. And, Ved, and Vedanta, Vedanta, it is called the superconductive body. Hmm, see, I got all these different bodies now. You got the astral and you got these two, but they're just different names, but they're the same one. They're light body. The ancient Egyptians called it the luminous body or being. Uk or the carax. This, concept, this conception evolved into Gnosticism, where it is called the radiant body in the Mitriarch liturgy. It was called the perfect body. In the hermetic corpus, it is called the immortal body. In the alchemical condition, the emerald tablets call it the golden body. Okay. Now it goes in to talk about Tibetan Buddhists that saw some of their lamas.